<laughs> well, hello, Malt Shop Memories Cruisers and all our Star Vista Live Cruisers out there. Your cruise host, Jason, back with another edition of All Access Pass from Home. As always, I'm here in Portland, Oregon, and today I have with me an absolute legend in the music business and an absolute <laughs> legend in the Malt Shop Memories cruise history, uh, the one and only, the Geeter with the Heater, Mr. Jerry Blavitt. How are you, sir? Chase, you look marvelous. I know that you're here to save the world. Yes. When we sail, I've never seen you look so good with that little do, Drew. This is my, <laughs> this is my quarantine beard, Jerry. I'm not shaving it until we're allowed to go back out in public. That's my deal. So this could get ugly. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> well, you know, you could look could be Santa if we only diet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I had a friend of mine actually just the other day say the same thing. I said, your beard looks great. He said, listen, if I'm out of work, I'm trying to get a jump start on the Santa beard for come Christmas. <laughs> how, are, how are you, sir? You look awesome as always. Yeah, well, you know, I'm doing the radio shows, you know. Uh, I'm making people happy with the music that I'm playing. The music I'm playing, what, what the world needs now is love. Uh, just a little loving, united we stand, divided we fall, you know, let's all get together. And music, as the Malt Shop Memories guys and gals know, is this thing that brings our generation together. And through all of these situations that we're going through today, we're going to make it because yeah. of the music. The music speaks for where we've been, what we've done, and how we're going to survive, you know. And you've been every song, Jace, every song has a meaning. Sure. It hits you differently than it hits me. It hits the audience different, but it all has a meaning that applies to us individually. I had a great conversation with Peter Asher the other day, and we were discussing something similar that that, that is the beauty of. Uh, I just lost your, uh, I just yeah, lost hold your on. video. <laughs> Hold on. How, how, how do we do that? Now, it's do... all me. It's all right. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll fix it right here. I'm going to bring you back. I'm, I'm bringing you back. Can you bring uh, me back? <laughs> yeah. There you yeah, go. You what, should... what? Let's see. <laughs> I, I don't know. All right. Hold on. It, it should ask you to start your video again. Well, malt shoppers, it's okay. I'm here. Ho you can hold hear on. Well, well. No, we can still hear you. It's all right. Your video hold will come back. Something came up. How do we get the video? Hold on. Oh, hold on. Okay. Hey, there he hey. is again. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> um, what I was saying was I talked to Peter Asher just the other day and we were talking about lyrics and how they mean something different to every person, but, mm -hmm. but ultimately they, they, they reflect on your life, you, you know, they, and right. that's why they mean something different. And I think as you're talking about right now, especially now, you know, we need, we need that music. We need those lyrics. Well, you know, as I said, listen to the songs. What the world needs now is love. Uh, what's going on, Marvin Gaye? Uh, wake up, everybody. <laughs> I mean, you know, the sad thing is that many young people have never experienced what is happening today. Yep. We, as a generation of Americans, have gone through wars, depressions, famine, uh, and the more shop memories folks out there, we're strong. And we got to pass the strength to young people who love our music as yeah. much as we love our music. And no matter what the conversation is, music is what gets us by every day. I know it does for me. If I want to be happy, I play rock and roll is here to stay, or come go with me. If I want to remember when I was a teenager, why must I be a teenager in love? <laughs> so it, it becomes a part of what malt shop memories people are all about. Yeah. And as you and I know, we've shared the wonderful interviews with people like Brenda Lee and Smokey Robinson yeah. and Dion and Frankie Avalon and Frankie Valley. And always the message has been, we are one through the music that we listen to. And that's the secret. That's a beautiful message, you know, and it's, it's, it's very true. Uh, and actually, I was talking to someone the other day. You know him very well, George Trollinger. George does oh, our yeah. malt shop mayor. You know George well. And yeah. uh, this has been echoed by many different people, but George specifically was saying, you know, he was imploring people, and I've mentioned this in a couple of interviews. He said, if for an hour a day, just an hour, I'm not asking you for your whole day, just an hour, turn off the news, turn off the TV, Put on your favorite record, your favorite album, your favorite radio station, you know, 
the Geeter or yeah. whoever you're listening. Turn it on and just listen to some music. Just disappear down that rabbit hole for a little bit. Just allow yourself that freedom because uh, it, it can take you beyond, you know, for those people that are feeling claustrophobic and quarantined and kind of, you know, right. stuck in their house, it can, it can take those walls down, you know, and it can take you beyond that. You know, there are a couple of wonderful songs that I play. The House That I Live In, which Frank Sinatra did in 1944, and it's called, What is America to Me? The House That I Live In, The Neighbor That Shares the Neighborhood, The Corner Butcher, The Carpenter, It What Makes America Great. And that's what it's all about, music. Music, music that talks about a wonderful time, and it's inspirational, Jace. Yes, it sir. gives people hope. It gives people hope, which is what we need. Which is the the yep. key to a lot of this. Um, yep. So if you don't, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, Jerry. You yep. wrote a fantastic book. Tell me, you only rock once, obviously, is your book, and and as as many of our malt shop fans know, and our our fellow cruisers know, it's our favorite quote on board. Is it's in the book. Um, <laughs> For those people that have not read it, um, give us a, give us your elevator pitch. What's the history of the well, Geeter? Where do you come I, from? I, I tell you why I wrote the book. It's the same thing we're talking about as far as inspiration for young people. I came from a broken family. Uh, father, Jewish racketeer. Mother, a little Italian girl, 1936. She's at the Broadway Theater in South Philly. In comes this Jewish racketeer being chased by cops. He sits down next to her. They don't find this guy. They leave. Six weeks later, she runs away and marries <laughs> this Jewish fella because she was the one that had to do all of the cleaning and she was looking for a way out. So I was born in 1940 and I was born in a situation that was Italians didn't like the Jews because they considered the Jews to be the killer of Christ back then. Mm -hmm. The Jews were in their own world. And I was raised by nuns because my mother had to get a job as a riveter because my father was in and out of the can. My mother was disowned. So I came up in a childhood raised by nuns, loneliness, and through music and radio, I found a fulfillment. And I said, I want to write this book about how I came into music and how I went on television and how I overcame the prejudice, the yeah. things that I saw. And I wrote the book about my friendships with some wonderful people that ushered me along the way. Sammy Davis Jr. I was Don he, Rickles. He's over your shoulder there. Exactly I'm right. Picture right there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, and people like Sinatra. You know, over here. I don't know if you can see Frank. Yeah. But oh yeah. There he yeah, is. He's all the. He says to the Gator, my main man, <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Oh, Frank. But you know, I, I wanted to show the people that. Limited amount of education, but when you find a passion, go for it. And my passion was making people happy. And I wanted to show the fact that I grew up in a neighborhood and you knew everybody in the neighborhood. You knew the number writer, you knew the baker, you knew the carpenter, you knew who was doing loan sharking or whatever, but that was their business. And yeah. they never, I never questioned anybody's business. I question if they shook my hand and if they were proper to me. Sure. That was America. Respect, loyalty. And the book is all about how a young person, and you can identify when you read the book, you say, wow, you can overcome every or any obstacle. It's a fantastic and book. That's what, it's a great read. That's what, yeah, that's what the book's about. My life and music, how it happened. <laughs> you know, Jace, I never planned anything in my life. I've always, if I had a desire to do something, I went out and I worked and I made it happen. I'm still on radio today. I'm still playing music from my heart, not a research chart, music that mm -hmm. I want to share 
See, that's the word in America. We share together. When I was a kid, if Mrs. Capuano didn't have food, Mrs. Pimento said, go across the street, bring them some food. She doesn't feel well. See how she's doing. Yeah. That's what we need today. We are one world, one world, and we all got to get together. And the world that we live in, the Mall Shop Memories guys and gals, is the real world. And we'll survive, and we'll make it happen again, and we'll dance, and we'll laugh. That's a great message, and I love you for sharing that, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you get the nickname The Geeter? Where does that come from for anyone that doesn't got, know? I know it's gotta... in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> no, what happened, Jason? When I went on the air, uh, I was doing a nightclub act, uh, a radio show from a place called the Venus Lounge. I had bought the time and I brokeraged the time and uh, I made a little bit of money. Uh, I owned the sponsors and the time. And when the snowstorm closed the club, I, I took all of, I had, couldn't do a talk show, so I went up this little cockamamie station called WCAM in Camden. And I started to play all these. It's the only thing I had. And I played Little Richard, Fats Domino, uh, all of the great, the Cleftones, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bo Diddley. Uh, and the phones would go crazy because kids were surfing to see if they were out of school. And they heard this music in this guy. Bam, bop, bop, my man, pots and pans rhyming. And what happened is instead of me doing an hour, I wind up doing four or five hours because there was no relief coming to the station. And I finally got home and uh, went to bed at two, three in the morning and trying to get some sleep. And the general manager calls up and he says, I got to talk to you. Now I figured I'm in trouble because I'm only supposed to do an hour. <laughs> yeah. So I said, uh, well, he said, what did you do last night? I said, well, <laughs> like, that's a loaded no question, relief. sir. Right. Yeah. No, no, I, said, I said, there was no relief, man. I, I, I played my rock and roll music. He said, well, whatever you did, we've never had a reaction like this on this station. So I decided I wasn't going to do a talk show anymore. Uh, and I wanted to play my music, which were oldies. And I figured, well, I just can't be Jerry Blabbit. They all knew me because I was a dancer on bandstand. Bandstand. And they knew me from being Danny the Junior's road manager. They knew me from being Don Rickles' valet. But at those days, Georgie Woods, the man with the goods, had a handle. Uh, Alan Freed was called the king of rock and roll, the founder of rock and roll. He had a handle. Mm -hmm. uh, Jocko was the ace from out of space. So I just couldn't be Jerry Blavitt. So I said, what makes sense here? I know nothing about <laughs> what I'm doing right now, but man, these kids are calling up, the phones are ringing. I'm already at the other end of the dial. What makes sense? I said, wait a second, an alligator, if you're in Florida and you go close to an alligator, you think it's sleeping, but man, it snatches you up. I said, that's it. But I can't be the alligator, the alligator. What rhymes with alligator? If I can rhyme with something, alligator, alligator made it. The geeter. The ge now, why does the geeter make sense with what I'm doing? The heater. The heater. When you're a kid hanging on the corner, freezing, a guy comes by. We jump in the guy's car. We say, turn the heater up. After five <laughs> minutes, it's so hot. Turn the heater down. That's it. I'm the geeter with the heater. The record pleader, the music I'm playing is pure rock and roll. And the phones are ringing. And in the background with the dedication is the fathers of the parents. Turn that guy down. It's rock. It's, I was the geeter <laughs> with the hot heater. The record pleader. The boss with the hot the big, sauce. The big boss with the hot sauce, baby. That was it. <laughs> Jerry, you've done so many things and you've been re, uh, responsible for either breaking so many acts or supporting so many acts when you weren't supposed to, uh, you know, and by supposed to, you know what I'm talking about. Obviously, I, were... I, yeah. Listen, I was not, I was not the favorite of other disc jockeys yeah. <laughs> because of the fact they had to play format radio. Yeah. They had a play, which was on the list. I played music that I liked. I wanted to share it with my audience, twist and shout. Don't make me over. Sherry, he's so fine. By the chiffons. 
nobody was playing that because yeah. I played them as a record, which went with my oldies, it had the same feel. And all of a sudden, kids are making dedications to other radio stations. Why aren't you playing this music that the Geet yeah. is playing? So after there were sales in the market, they had to put the record on the list. See, back then, this track is only played from a list. Sure. Top 40. And then they have bubbling yeah. under. Me, I played what I wanted to play. I wanted to make my people happy. Even today, when you see me work, Malt Shop Memories, I have no idea what my next song's going to be to get them dancing. There's no set format. I go, but what I see and what I you gotta feel. You got to see what they do. Right. And I say to them, okay, let's sing along. Dum, 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 dee, dee. And they go, dum, dum, the dum, tough dum. Lyrics. Right. <laughs> it's a, I do like, whoop, whoop, run around Sue. Ah, everybody, boom. <laughs> you know, more today than yesterday. And they sing along. They know the lyric. Because it's happy music, Chase. Happy well, music. You also played a huge role, and I'm going to use a term that is no longer acceptable, but you know, you you played a huge role in breaking through racial barriers and playing race music yeah. as it was yeah. known, you know, and things like right. what what made you so dedicated to the cause? Just the pure passion and talent of the musicians yeah. or it, music brings people together, whether it's country, whether it's rhythm and blues, whether it's rock and roll. I've never looked at a song as who was the artist that recorded that. I listened to it, the four tops. Well, I didn't care if they were black, blue, or yellow. It was music that my audience wanted to hear. And when I did my TV show, we featured, I would say 65% of the artists were black artists. Yeah. Martha Reeves and the Mandela's, the Supremes, the only show they ever did in Philadelphia was the Geeter Show. Uh, the Capitals, Cool Jerk. Uh, I can go on and on and on. Uh, Sonny Turner with the plot. Every one of the artists that have been on our Mall Shop Memories Cruise have been a part of my musical life, not only with their music, but as friends. And yeah. that's why when we're all together, at the end of the night, you see us, we're out in the back, Mm -hmm. We're laughing, we're mingling with the public that's a part of the mm -hmm. Mall Shop Memories Cruises. And that's what America was about. And that's what Mall Shop Memories Cruise is about. I said to Alan Rubin, when we first did it, Jace, uh, the first one, you, you weren't on Ten the first couple no, of I No, yeah. I missed the first three, 10 years yeah. ago. Alan oh. said to me, you think this can continue? I said, Alan, this could go on forever because music goes on forever and young yeah. people who hear this music for the first time the reaction is the same as it was when my young teenagers heard it the first <laughs> time when i played it you see that's phenomenal uh and you also i mean growing up in philadelphia obviously you you had the you had a lot of phenomenal artists come from your neighborhood your areas i, I mean yeah. you know obviously yeah. you have a close relationship with chubby with the golden boys with yeah. you know Tell us a little bit about right. growing up with all those guys. Well, you know, we were neighborhood kids and we all shared in common the music. And we never looked at ourselves as stars. We were in awe at what was happening. It yeah. happened to me when I was 13 years old when I won a dance contest on Bandstand. It was a TV show. And when I went back in the neighborhood, hey, we saw you dancing. All of a sudden, you get fan mail. You yeah. don't get a big hit. You say, wow, I like doing this. I want to continue doing this. And that's the way it was with Bobby and Chubby and Avalon. And Frankie Avalon was smart enough to know, and the guy that opened up the door was Bobby Darren. Bobby Darren was smart enough to know that, well, rock and roll is what I'm doing, but it's going to take me to a different place. There's the nightclubs, there's the motion picture world, and there's TV. We were recording artists back then. Darren opened up the door when he made an album called That's Life. And <laughs> the owners of Atlantic Records did not want him to do that because it was Mac the Knife, yeah. Through a Long and Lonely Night, all standards, softly, softly as I get you. 
when he did that album, even Dick Clark said to Bobby, kids aren't going to dance the back the knife. He said, yes, they are. And because of that album, he went into the Copa and mm. broke every record, even Sinatra's record at the Copa Cabana. That's when Sam Cooke went in there. Uh, that's when Connie Francis went in there. That's when Avalon went in there. Bobby Rydell went in there. So our music took us to one level and then took us to the next level. And Avalon was smart enough, as Dion was, but Dion was, you know, Dion really, that's an interesting name because Dion's such a talented guy. But he really laid back as far as doing clubs and things like that. He was a recording artist. Mm -hmm. But the other guys, Avalon and Rydell, uh, even Chubby laid back. Uh, he didn't really want to adjust to nightclubs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Of course, he was great in movies. Don't knock the twist. Don't rock this. But everything in life is a stepping stone. If you've got talent, step one, step two, step three. And I know you're in close contact with all those guys today. How's everybody doing? How's everyone hanging in there right now? Well, we're all in the same boat. So to speak. Uh, I talked I talk to Frankie. Uh, uh, he says, how you doing? I said, Frank, I don't know what day it is. It's <laughs> Groundhog Day. <laughs> every, every day goes on the same day. I mean, the thing that really uh, knocks me out is I can't go to the gym. I mean, I ride the bike. I was going to ask you about that in a moment. Yeah. I, I mean, I got to go to the gym. I mean, you know, I'll be 80 years old in a couple of months, you know, and I mean, I work out and I, and I, and I got to do my push ups on the floor. I got my weights, but it's not the same. Yeah. There's motivation in going to the gym. My, my wife, you know, Brittany very well. Yep, Obviously, yep. she's a personal trainer and a gym fanatic. And so she's, she's going through the withdrawals herself right now a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's, yeah, that, that's a bummer. And, you know, I'm a people person, as, as you knew, Jace. Yeah. And I, thank God I'm still on the radio and I talk to my people. But normally I'd be out with guys, we'd go into a restaurant, I'd be picking up yeah. checks, I'd be laughing with people. You know, the whole way of life, not only for me, but for all Americans has changed. And we will adjust to it. I just hope that this, we come up with a solution quick. You know, I mean, yeah. we're, we've got, you know, we've got the strength because we lived uh, in, in situations. I worry about young people, you know, who get disillusioned and who get depressed. And I worry about the, you know, many things that this thing's, sure. but listen, we'll, we'll get by it. I mean, this, listen, this, this to me is a sign. It's a sign that we as a world have to get together as we did listening to music and doing dances with 2,000 kids from every different neighborhood who met each other, assimilated with each other, danced together, and we became all friends. All is this that the world has to be. We have to share all of the technology that we have with all people, yeah. not just, and we got to stop fighting with each other. You know, that's the secret of more Chop Memories Group. <laughs> we, get people, we get people from all over the world and we, we become one. We really Nobody's do. got a beef. <laughs> We're yeah. here to have fun. It's, it's such a feel-good event, you know. I, I think Charter Cruising, Star Vista Live really does a wonderful job. But, you know, I think there's between six and eight different titles now, six and eight different cruises, right. depending on right. which ones are running and what time of year. And right. they're all very diverse, but they all have one thing in common, and, you know, that's music, right? They all have music in common. And to your point a moment ago, whether it's country or whether it's Soul Train or Malt Shop or 60s or 70s or, you know, it's all music and you know whatever your forte is within music once you're on the cruise and i say this as the ho as one of the hosts up front and you've heard me say it a million times i don't care where you're from i don't care where you're from in the world because for the next week we're from here this is where and we're we are sharing we're sharing lifestyles yeah. and we're meeting new people and we're experiencing the way people live through our music which brings us together 
And that's what America was built on. People from all different denominations, people from all different religions. You lived in the neighborhood, the Italians lived here, the Jewish people lived there, the Polish people lived there. You went to church, you belonged to a parish. Yeah. And we all got along and that's the way it's gotta be. America, I mean, I play what the world needs now is love. Let's get together. United <laughs> we stand, divided we fall. This is a sign that's gonna bring us and make us stronger because we as the Malt Shop Memories kids, remember and we pass that on and we live. You know, I feel so sad and you know this, when we get off that ship, how many people come up to you and say, ah, oh, we're gonna miss you. Uh, I wish this thing would have never yeah. ended because yeah. it's See an you experience. In a year. I can't wait till next year. Yeah, you know, and that's what it's all about. And you know the wonderful thing? The artists that are on these cruises yeah. share the same thing. They do. And they appreciate the audience. You know what the guys say to me? Like when we sit and we drink a little wine, Peter, they love us. I said, yes, they love you because you entered their life and you made them happy and they appreciate it. And I say, you say with me on stage, the love that the audience gives those artists they bring it back a hundred times. Yeah, absolutely. What, it, on that same token of artists, and what was it like being around with and or in your own right, kind of a part of the Rat Pack? I mean, you've mentioned, you, you've mentioned Frank a few times and obviously Sandy's well, over your shoulder uh, there. You know, yeah, you've you been very close uh, with them. Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you, when a performer of that caliber sees something in another young person that reminds them of them. They embrace you. I was embraced by these performers because they saw an honesty. You were the matchstick. Right, that's it. And you couldn't <laughs> get next to these guys. Yeah. But I would sit till four in the morning with Sammy. He'd be in London, he'd call me, get her on board. I said, Sam, it's four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I forgot there's a difference in time. <laughs> you know, with, with Frank, with my mother cooking for me, it's all in the book. I mean, Darren, when Darren was at the Latin Casino, he'd call me up, I'll be on the radio. How come you didn't come to see me? I said, well, Bobby, I'm doing a radio show. Well, I'm at the Warwick Hotel. All right, it's 12 o'clock. Well, come over anyway. I get there at one o'clock, we'd sit and we'd laugh until four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, because we had something in common. Show business people are very special. A lot of young performers don't understand the name of it is called show business. business. It's a business and you have to apply your talent to what that business is. You're supposed to hit at eight o'clock, you hit at eight o'clock. You don't hit at 10 o'clock. You got to do a matinee show, you got to do the matinee show, man. You have to respect the audience because it's show business business it is a business and the performers of our world understood that one of the great things that i've i've heard from you know not on your level but i've been fortunate enough to interview a lot of these wonderful stars and almost every one of them thanks the audience first you, you know when oh, i ask yeah. them what's the longevity how have you been able to stay popular for 50 years 30 years 20 years and how are you almost every one of them starts with fans you know people that have believed in me and loved me and followed me and do you know, I've been in this professionally for 60 years. I'm no different than anybody else. You don't feel good. You got aches and pains. Sure. But when you get up there and do your show, no aches and pains. And I can honestly tell you, I do not remember ever missing a show or ever really being late except the one time with the change of clocks. <laughs> Last yeah. year with smoking. <laughs> All right. We covered it well. We were just fine. You, you covered well. You know, and and I hope this would not embarrass him to tell this story. I certainly hope not. But uh, I'm going to tell it anyway because it's one of my favorite entertainment stories. And you know this man very well. I was standing backstage my first year and I was talking to Chubby right before Chubby's show. And I was, I was talking to, to Chubby Checker backstage, and which is surreal in its own right. 
you know, if you didn't grow up with him, I'm, I'm talking to a legend right before his show. And he looked at me very politely at, at about two minutes to showtime. And he said, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jason, can you give me a second? I said, are you kidding? Absolutely. And I stepped back and I kind of turned away, but I watched him out of the corner of my eye. And, you know, Chubby's not 25 years old anymore. He still looks great, sounds great, but he's not 25. And, you know, so going out and doing two shows is still an accomplishment, you know. And I watched him kind of stand there for a second. He put his head down and he kind of, you know, and I, I, I literally watched him take a breath, take another breath. And I watched him turn into Chubby Checker. I watched him... I watched his chest come up. I watched his shoulders get big. I watched his head come up and get proud. And he looked at me and he said, it's showtime. And he walked on stage. It, it, to this day, it makes the hair on my arm stand up. It was one of those moments, to your point, it doesn't matter if you have the matinee show, the eight o'clock show, the five o'clock show, the one, it doesn't matter. Your fans are here. It's showtime. They want to see Chubby Checker. They don't want to see a facsimile of, they don't want to see you sick or not feeling... They want to see Chubby Checker. Yeah. And I watched him turn into the Chubby Checker that they all know him and love him as and right. walk out there. And it was just it remember, was unbelievable. Remember, a doctor is to make people feel good. A lawyer is to take care of his client. A performer is to take care of the person that made them what they are. So we all have a job to do, you know, yeah. everybody. And that's our job. Listen, I am blessed because I've had the freedom to play the music that I want. And when you read the book, a lot of people tried to stop me because I was called the rebel jock. Yep. And you don't do radio like that. You don't talk over a record. But they didn't know I knew the record beat. 16 bars, bop, 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 and out. Then what happened, this jockeys followed suit, but they had to go buy a clock. Yeah. <laughs> they had the clock. Oh, and brothers now, 15, foot, bop, 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 and they had to get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me, it's in the soul, it's in the heart. What's on my yeah. lung is on my tongue. I play music from my heart, not a research chart. And that's the way, that's what it is. And the audience knows that. Your audience yeah. walks up. How about year after year after year, the people come back and the same, the out. same and the new ones and yeah. the new ones, because it's fun. You're reliving a time. And I think more so now than ever with what's happening, our audience is going to appreciate this year, next yeah. year, because this is something we've never experienced before. Sure. And we've got a party on. We do. And Jerry, I know you're, I know you, we all have things to do here. So before I let you go, any messages you want to share directly to your malt shop memories, fans, and your, your folks out there that know you and love you and join us every year on the cruise. And well, yeah, to all of you out there, we're in the same boat. It's called more shop memories boat every year, but we're all at this point of our lives. We're locked in. We all share the same frustrations and the same everyday thing, like it's the same day, but we're gonna be good because we're Americans and we live at a wonderful time and the music will keep us whole until we meet again. And we will, cause you gotta remember, you gotta keep on rocking cause you really only do rock, rock once. once. You are the geeter with the heater. You're the big boss with the hot sauce. You're the man, Jerry Blavitt. I appreciate you as always, my guy. Thank you so much for taking some time to be with me and, of course, all our Malt Shop Memories fans. Well, I got to say something about you to all of the people out there. Here is a young man that adopted so beautifully to our world and our music. And that's a tribute to your soul, that you're pure. You could appreciate any kind of music. A lot of people don't have that, and that's your passion, and Very that's kind. the secret of what you do, not only on the Malt Shop Memories Cruise, but as the host of all of the other cruises, because music is universal, whether it's country, where it's flower power, where it's the soul train, whether it's disco, it's music that makes people happy, and you adopt to it so well. My you're man. Kind. Pots and pans. Pots uh, and you're, you're very kind, Jerry. You know I love you with all my heart, and I appreciate Thank you being you here. Well.
Thank you, brother. Okay. Be well, stay Thanks. healthy, stay safe, wash your hands to everybody out there. Wash your hands, wash, wash your, your hands, hands, wash your wash hands, your hand, wash your hands. <laughs> you know, I do, when I do my show at Memories of Mark, I say, clap your hands, I change it now. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your Free hands, out. wash your hands, wash your hands, I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance. <laughs> You just made everyone seasick rolling around your room right there. <laughs> <laughs> to all our All Access Pass fans and all the folks watching, whether you're from Malt Shop Memories Cruise or from another one of Star Vista Live Cruises, thanks so much for tuning in on behalf of myself and the Wait, one and only Chase, Chase, the Chase, Gator. Chase, Yo. Chase, we are the last, our world, of the last earthlings. So yeah. keep it alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. Stay healthy, stay safe, wash your hands. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Be well. Thank you, Jerry. Love you guys. Bye-bye, pal. See you soon. Bye-bye.